uh, characteristics and qualities to ourselves, especially values, religion, those kind of things. So similarity is important. Uh, there's been at least five studies that suggest we marry people who have similar facial features to ourselves, or that we're at least attracted to people with similar facial features, and it goes to the reverse, the opposite, if you're heavily stressed. So if you're heavily stressed, you'll rate uh, people who have the opposite facial features as you, as higher, more attractive. I don't know. Um, but similarity is one thing. Complementarity. So we like people who complete us in certain ways. Often a morning person will marry a night person. Often a person who really likes math will mar marry the person who really likes poetry or if, you know, whatever you can think of as polar opposites. Often they, there's an attraction there, a completeness. And you go, well, that's kind of the opposite of similarity. Exactly. Humans are pretty difficult. Okay, so um, <laughs> reinforcement. We marry people or we like people who give us something. It could be gifts. Um, I had a friend in Denmark. His name was Tolls. Host Fleilixen, his name actually was Trolls. And he'd give everybody gifts because he wanted to be their friend. And it worked on some, but he then would backstab you. So then he'd have to get more gifts. Anyway, um, but <laughs> <laughs> nobody liked him. After a while, his gifts wore out. Uh, too much backstabbing. But anything that you, you enjoy or you get rewarded, do, does anyone here like being around intellectual people? It's fun to hear new stats and figures and intellectual things. Yeah, that's, that can be fun because you're learning from that. And then humor is another one. Um, Humor is something they're giving you. They're giving you a laugh. So that's reinforcement theory. All right. I said we'd talk a little more in depth on the, on the physical. Truth is, most of these things you can't do anything about. So what's the point in telling you? Well, there's a few you can do something about. But <laughs> physical features, first of all, is facial symmetry. So that your right and left side of your head looks the same. They've done things and messed up part half of somebody's head and then rated them and stuff. And it turns out that that's one of the biggest things is that your left and right, you have symmetry along the axis that would go straight down your nose and your mouth. Um, on your face. That's attractive. Um, eyes. There's been a lot of study on eyes. Turns out that guys with brown eyes don't care the eye color of their women. Guys with blue eyes are almost always more attracted to ladies with blue eyes, which is why the blue eye, which is a recessive trait, continues. So interesting, huh? Um, and there's lots of other stuff on eye color. Uh, let's see what else. Um, size. Your bigger eyes. They think it's because it looks more like a baby, so you look more young and uh, so that kind of thing. But bigger eyes typically is attractive. Um, and spacing. They, they say that the eye needs to be a whole eye length between your eyes. So and a full eye length between your eyes is the most attractive. There's actually a 44%, 33% facial. They have, they have different ideas there um, on what it's supposed to really look like. But there are studies that suggest that. There's nothing you can do, right? You can't really pull your skull and go, ooh, I got better eyes now. Good to go. Um, not so much. Men, it turns out that women are attracted to your nice square jaws, um, a little bit longer in the lower face, which all is due to more testosterone when you are a fetus. Um, they also like you when you're taller. Actually, studies say women don't really need you to be tall. They just need you to be taller than they are. So eHarmony will not pair somebody, a woman who's shorter with a guy who's, or I'm a woman with a guy who's shorter than her because they had too many complaints. So almost no, never, no matter what, eHarmony's got that as one of their fixed uh, ideas. You can never date a guy who's shorter than you. Um, let's see. Broader shoulders, they say, for guys. Um, women. A lot of people think it's going to be breast size or something. No. Actually, breast size has nothing to do with attraction. Uh, different guys are attracted to different things. Not a big deal. Um, they've also done uh, actual larger versus a smaller breast on the same person. And no one really cares. And no one can really tell. Um, but one thing that they do care about is waist to hip size ratio. So having a nice looking waist uh, definitely is more attractive, and that's almost every culture. But in the end, most of these ideas are cultural. Let's also long hair. So studies show most guys would probably prefer longer hair on women, and turns out at least in Europe and America they actually prefer blonde. As a matter of fact, mo they prefer blonde everywhere. The studies I saw, except Asia, and Asian guys prefer black hair. Um, and they think though that it has nothing to do with hair color. It has to do with hair luster and that blonde reflects the light better, and any hair that reflects light better makes them look younger, more youthful, more energetic. So as long as you wash your hair, you're okay. Um, that's really I think, the bottom line, which I don't really have to say too much about in America, but in Europe, they still take one shower a week. So anyway, um, we could go on, uh, but that's not the point of tonight. <laughs> Cultural uh, changes, though, is like, what about skin color? Most cultures say lighter skin color is better, but then you get to America and we think tan is better, or at least people keep looking for it. It's really interesting. All the way down to Mexico, all the women are trying to get tans. From Mexico down south, they're all trying to look whiter. When I was in China, they were using parasols to keep the sun off them so they could look paler. Even in our own culture, the 1700s, 
was the pale women that were the pretty ones. Because if you were outside working hard, then you'd get a tan. And so you look like a worker. So the women who don't work at all, somehow that means is attractive? Anyway, <laughs> they're the whiter ones. So that was attractive. Um, and even sizes. I mean, this is the Greek you know, model, and that's what most of us, our models probably look like. But that, that would be a Greek goddess, right? Well, do you know what the Vikings thought was a goddess? That's the, that's the Viking goddess. Why? Because this woman's got hips that are going to birth some kids, and she's going to last a winter or two, right? <laughs> so if Kentucky continues, I'm predicting we're going to go to this model. So if we can, <laughs> all right, anyway, maybe not. Um, what we do know with modern uh, science, though, is that for the most people in modern day, healthy body weight, not skinny. Turns out a lot of women think they need to be skinnier. They don't. Guys actually like healthy body weight. What do you think, guys? Is, am I right about this? That you have to be really skinny. You have to be good for what you are. Healthy body weight is the important thing there. And it's the same thing for you guys. And good hygiene. Um, I had my students in public relations do polls on campus about five years ago on why you would date someone and why you wouldn't. And theology, by the way, was like 10 or 12. They didn't care. Didn't care what theological background you come from. Nothing like that. You had to be a Christian. Christian was number two. The number one reason you don't date somebody, number two was because you're not a Christian. Number one was because you don't take a shower every day. So, guys, <clears throat> live up to the standard. Anyway, so, um, and then, as you were saying over there, average facial features. If you take people and you put their faces in composite pictures, the more people you throw into a composite, the more you'll be attracted to their face. As you see here, that's Africa's nine delegates. These are to the, the Miss Universe competition. The 81 delegates all is there. Uh, then the Europe 28, Asia 14, finalists 15, and the Americas 30. Don't they almost all look like the exact same woman? It turns out that we are most attracted to average traits. So guys, if you really want to give her a compliment, you tell her you have one seriously average face. <laughs> See how that goes for you. Anyway, no, my book doesn't have that kind of bad advice. So um, other thing that's interesting is that we're, we're attracted to the opposite when it comes to masculine to feminine characteristics, which means he is most attracted to her, she's most attracted to him, he's the, and then I don't know. Anyway, so. Um, <laughs> Uh, but it turns out that that's the case. We're attracted to the opposite polarity of, uh, of our face when it comes to masculine and feminine. Again, these are things you can't do much about. So I want to get to the theology side, things you can do something about, and things that are probably much more important. The Bible actually is fairly silent on dating. Have you noticed that? If there were a book of first and second dating, right after first and second, third hesitations, um, <laughs> it'd probably be there. But then you'd probably need first, second, third breakup. So, you know. Uh, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be very good. There are some general principles, though, that we can learn um, about dating. Uh, first of all, a question I almost always get is, is there really just one right one for me? What I think is really funny about this is it's a Calvinist Wesleyan almost debate, and both of them are just fine. Because if you're a Calvinist and believe there's just one option, and God's put it all into place, and then he's, you know, he, he's got it all predicted out for you, you don't have to worry, because he's got the one right one for you, and you have to meet her. It's already predestined, right? You don't have to worry about mi miss missing her. And if you're not a Calvinist, you're a Wesleyan, then I think God has quite a few that could be yours, and you could choose what guy or girl for your future, and you don't have to worry about it because God's still got a hand in it, and you don't have to worry about missing the right one. So the big fear of, I'm going to miss the right one, is, is not 